we're going to finish chapter four today and look at some application problems um, with oblique triangles. So the problems span both the law of sines and law of cosines section. So if they think some of the law of sine, like the 9.5 problems were actually assigned as part of the exercises from that section in the notes already, but I just sort of listed them again. Um, these are the actual application problems. And we have a test coming up on Tuesday. We decided on Tuesday there was, you know, I think we, we voted. There was, I wouldn't say overwhelming support, but, you know, definitely seemed like people preferred Tuesday to Thursday. So I have a problem set to hand out. And uh, today's recitation will be used to work on the problem set or exercises, if you wish. Um, does anybody have any questions before we start? Okay. All right. So we're just going to do a couple of application problems. Um, <clears throat> and these are applications of oblique triangles. So. Basically, I think a lot of it is just trying to figure out where's the triangle, right? Like what triangle are we trying to solve? What piece of information are we trying to get? Um, so let's see if we can't sketch this out. It says we have a lighthouse that's 50 meters high, is on the edge of a vertical cliff overlooking the ocean, um, and then there's a ship out, and it says that the angle of elevation from the ship to the bottom of the lighthouse measures 15 degrees and the angle of elevation from the ship to the top of the lighthouse measures 24 degrees. So before we even, um, before we uh, <coughs> talk about the questions we want to answer, let's just sort of sketch this. So let's say this is the cliff. Here's the ocean. We have a little boat out here. And then we have uh, a lighthouse. I'll say is that right there. We know that the lighthouse is 50 meters. Okay. Then they give us some angles. They say that the angle of elevation from a ship to the bottom of the lighthouse measures 15 degrees. All right. This is definitely not drawn to scale because that angle looks substantially more than 15 degrees. But um, okay. 15 degrees. There's the angle of elevation. And then if you, from the same point, if you the measure the angle of elevation to the top of the lighthouse, let me try that again, it measures 24 degrees. So that's this whole big angle. Okay, I think we've sketched the information they gave us. Um, find the distance from the ship to the cliff. So I, I think that's this distance down here. I'll call that X. And then find the height of the cliff. So we want to find this. Great. We don't, so I guess one thing we might realize so they've only given us one distance right they've just given us the height of the lighthouse um, it looks like we have a nice right triangle here but the only we only have one piece of information about that right triangle which is an angle down there so um, we don't have enough information to solve that right triangle the only side they gave us the only length is a side of this sort of sliver of a triangle so I think we have to focus there when you're solving an oblique triangle, one of the pieces that you have to be given to get anywhere is a side link. So um, let's see what kind of information we can fill in. This is, um, I think we could find this angle, right? This angle here is just going to be 25, 24 minus 15, which is 9 degrees. So now if we look at that top sort of sliver of a triangle, we have one side and one angle, which is still not enough information. What else can we get? A 
any information we could fill in with this right triangle sitting on the bottom? Like this angle here? Yeah, yeah great. So what is that angle going to be? 90 minus 24 Oh, wait, that's not 24. 24 is the... So if you do 90 minus 24, I think that's this one here. And we can still get this one by doing 90 minus 15, which is 75. So now we've got some angles. And so now I think we know all the angles, right? So we know this one. That's supplementary to the 75 degrees, so 105. Yeah. Uh, 105. Great. Now, OK, so I think we've filled in. I mean, we know all the angles, so there's nothing more to find there. And there's only one side they gave us. So now let's focus on that top, you know, triangle sitting on top of the right triangle. Um, what are we, like, what is some low-hanging fruit? I mean, I know that eventually X and H are our ultimate goals, but what can we do with that triangle? Find the sides. Find the sides? Like, how, and what could we, what's at our disposal right now? Yeah, law of sines because we know a side and the angle opposite that side. I kind of have that matched pair. So I think we could use that to find any of the other sides. So let's say if I used it to find like this side on the bottom here, then we know, then we can kind of focus on the right triangle, right? And we could use Sopatoa or whatever. So let's try to do that. I'm going to call this side, I don't know, Z, I guess. So we're going to first use law of sines to find z. What is that equation going to look like? And I think just uh, multiply both sides by sine of 66 degrees. So z is 50 times sine of 66 degrees over sine of 9 degrees. Um, make sure you're in degree mode. And we have 291.99 uh, meters. What can we do now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just, like, the pieces that we now know aside, we know all the angles on one side of that right triangle on the bottom, so we can use right triangle stuff to find the H and X. So let's solve that right triangle. Um, let's say if we want to find x first. If if we want, if we wish to find x first, I think we could do that uh, using cosine, right? So cosine of, and if it's the bottom right triangle, there's two right triangles I, c I could have solved, but because we found like this smaller diagonal here, it's the smaller right triangle. So that 15 degrees is the angle that we know. That 
that's x over 291.99. So x is 291.99 times cosine of 15 degrees. Two eighty two oh four. So that was what they wanted in part A. And then the height of the cliff. You could use uh, Pythagoras, or I think I'll just go ahead and use sine. Sine of 15 degrees is h over 291.99. Seventy five point five seven meters. How's that? I like this one because, um, First of all, we have to work a little bit at, at sketching that triangle, like figuring out the information they've given us. And then, you know, the first thing we have to do is find something they didn't ask us for, um, you know, in order to use that to get our, our results. So we kind of have to think ahead one or two steps. Um, questions on this example? Let's do one more. Um, all right, so we have a couple of ropes supporting a crate from above, and the tensions in the ropes are 23 kilograms and 17 kilograms. We want to know what the angle is between the two ropes. Um, again, we kind of have to figure out where our triangle is, because it isn't exactly the one that it looks like. Um, it's not really the one that we physically see here. Um, we have these tensions. Tensions are vectors. And they're holding up this crate. This crate is not moving, right? It's just sitting there. That means that overall, since it's not moving left or right, the, the, res the x component of the resultant tensions has to be zero. And it means that the y component of the resultant tensions has to exactly equal out the 35.5 kilograms. So that when I add these two vectors together, tip to tail, um, they, have to, they have to end right on the y-axis at a magnitude of 35.5 kilograms uh, positive. So if we sketch this out, We have one vector. I'll draw the 17 kilogram vector first. Okay, that's right there. That's my, I'll call that T1. And then when I add this 23 kilogram vector, it has to end. right on the y-axis. So we know that the length of that vector is its magnitude, 23. We know the third side, that vertical side, is 35.5. Now, <laughs> what we need to figure out is um, what angle we want. And so what's the angle between the vectors? So we know what it looks like over here. Um, we need to kind of figure out what it looks like over here. So I'm going to redraw the T2 vectors starting from the origin here. You know, we're looking for this guy. Um, 
So I'm going to draw just some dotted lines extending these, and I'm going to draw this horizontal. So this dotted line here is like an extension of the T1 vector, and here's the horizontal, which apparently takes a circuitous route, but whatever. Um, so we're looking for this angle right here, which means Right, so I want this angle has to be the same as this angle. So if I want this angle, like this is a straight line, that means if I found this angle here, the one opposite 35 and a half side, it's supplementary to that, right? So again, we kind of have to think a couple steps ahead. We have to think about where exactly is the angle that we're looking for. First of all, where's our triangle? It's not exactly the one that appears before us, given in the problem. And then how do we figure out what angle that we're looking for? So, you know, when we draw the vectors, it's pretty easy to see that it's this one at the bottom that we want, but then we have to see how does that fit into the triangle. And that's the same as this guy right here. So we're going to find, I don't know, maybe I'll call this um, uh, point A. Let me, so I'll call that point A. So I want angle A, right? And then I'll subtract from 180. I'm going to stop there for a moment and just see if there are questions on how we're going to approach this. So I think if we agree that that will get us what we want, I mean, now I think our path is pretty straightforward. We have a triangle and we know all three sides. What can we use to help us find whatever angle we might be interested in? Law of cosines. So um, I guess I'll call this my side A, right, because it's opposite angle A. Um, so law of cosines looks like a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of a. I'm going to do some algebra to solve for angle a first before I plug stuff in just because I find it more convenient to do that. So 2bc times cosine of a is b squared plus c squared minus a squared which means cosine of a is b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. And we can get angle a by taking arc cosine. We're going to be careful when we plug this stuff into the calculator. We're going to be prudent about our use of parentheses. So 17 squared plus 23 squared minus 35.5 squared over 2 times 17 times 23. And when we plug this into the calculator, I'm going to have a set of parentheses around the top and a set of parentheses around the bottom, all inside my overall bigger set of parentheses for the arc cosine overall. Closing those parentheses, divide, open parentheses for the bottom. Oops. 2 times 17 times 23. Closing the bottom, closing the arc cosine. I get 124.44 degrees. So that's angle A. And we said that what we, the angle that we were after is this one that's supplementary to A. So the angle we want is going to be 180 minus 55.56 degrees. Uh, 
How's that? Okay. All right. So, um, what I want to do that does finish this chapter, and rather than starting a new uh, a new chapter, um, I want to spend the rest of today and today's recitation working on the problem set. That's also what we're going to be doing on Thursday. So we're going to hold off on starting Chapter 5 until a week from Thursday. Um, before we put this one away, I'm just going to make a quick note. You might use this problem to help with, I think it's Problem 9. On the problem set. Any uh, questions before we start working on the problem set? Or practice exercises, if you prefer. Okay. All right.